Hello, I'm Dave Goldberg, engineering faculty member at the University of Illinois. And here in part two of the short uh, uh, video called What is Creativity, we're going to continue our discussion of that important question. So last time we, we made the distinction by, about thinking of creativity as a simple concept and thinking crea defining creativity is X versus thinking about creativity as a complex subject where we need to think of creativity as X. And we were thinking of uh, creativity in seven different ways. And last time we considered uh, creativity as individual thought process, group brainstorming, and socially enabled or mediated process. And this time we want to consider creativity as history, generative vision, heuristic inventive process, and uh, as eliminating resistance or blocks. So the first of these, uh, thinking of creativity as history, is a particularly interesting perspective. One uh, very well illustrated in James Burke's uh, famous book, The Pinball Effect. And, as an, and, and as, a, as an example of this idea that uh, creativity is sort of a con is a, about the contingency and dependency of inventions on one another, uh, consider the following example uh, drawn from the pinball effect that uh, Charles Nestler created the, the idea of a, a, uh, a curler and a, and a hair permanent to, 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 make, uh, to make hair curly. Uh, of course, that depended on the existence of uh, borax paste, which itself depended on the existence of cheap uh, borax deposits in Death Valley, California, which was made possible because of the existence of Yankee clipper ships that took immigrants to California as part of the gold rush and then returned products to the East Coast and to, and to England as, uh, as a result. And so the, you, wouldn't imagine other, uh, you wouldn't imagine this a priori, but the idea that uh, a hair permanent depends on borax paste and the Yankee clipper ship is not an immediately obvious one, but certainly a historically accurate one. Now, another view of creativity is that it's a kind of generative vision. And this is a common way for engineers to, to think of uh, creativity. Eugene Ferguson, in his book, Engineering in the Mind's Eye, considers that engineers pr produce sets of drawings and specifications that are some, s somehow a representation of the object uh, itself, and the, uh, the, the drawing contains all kinds of uh, decisions that the designer or the engineer has to make as, as part of laying down um, those, those drawings. Ferguson thinks this is so important that he uses it as a demarcation between engineering and artisanship that, in his mind, engineers are those who, who put down drawings and represent objects, and that artisans merely uh, create things from past examples. Uh, whether we agree with that perspective or not, it certainly highlights the idea that 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 making drawings is a is a, a, a particularly important uh, part of of what we might consider creativity to be. Another perspective on on creativity is to think of it as a inventive and heuristic process, and there are a number of different ways to come into this. Billy Cohen's fine book, The Discussion of Method. Uh, conducting the engineer's approach to problem solving takes this view explicitly and, and considers its philosophical ramifications. R.J. Weber's uh, book, uh, Forks, Phonographs, and Hot Air Balloons, takes this perspective and thinks of inventive thinking explicitly as heuristics. My own work in evolutionary computation and genetic algorithms also takes this point of view and, and throws in the, uh, the additional uh, suggestion that uh, invention and creativity are explicitly evolutionary processes in a way that can be put in, uh, uh, in, a, in analog to or in parallel with uh, natural selection and natural genetics. And of course, there are other kinds of uh, works that, that take this point of view. For example, the, the, uh, the Russian inventive uh, um, uh, process of invention called TRIZ explicitly takes this point of view. Now, there are many different types of heuristics. Some add variables, some change variables, some tweak variables, recombine or make combinations of variables. 
uh, transform them, make analogies, and so forth. Uh, and there are all kinds of uh, heuristics associated with various uh, physical, uh, physical laws. Uh, but the, the idea here is that there are many different rules of thumb that can help a system get from uh, one form to a, a, a somewhat improved or different form through some sort of transformation using various kinds of uh, rules or procedures. And finally, we'll t think of creativity as the removing of blocks. And this is a very interesting perspective and often a very productive one. So oftentimes it's the case that we become fixed on a particular way of, of uh, doing something. And one way to get beyond that is to think of the obstacles to changing our mind or changing the way we do things. And so Jim Adams takes that point of view in his, his famous uh, book, Conceptual uh, uh, Blockbusting. Or um, uh, Pressfield takes that point of view of removing resistance to an artist's creativity in his uh, lovely book, The War, The War of Art. But the idea of removing blocks is a powerful one when we think of, of uh, creativity. And taken together, um, we've we've taken a look at at creativity and how uh, creativity can be considered to be a composite of these these different approaches, not just one of them, but uh, something that needs to be thought of as a, a complex concept, not a simple one itself.